Welcome to On The Beat everyone, I'm Troy Thompson and today we'll be talking all about the esophageal spasm with Dr Richard Hurd of Gastroenterology Associates of Columbus. Welcome to the show, nice to see you buddy. Good to see you Everything too, going well? You. Everything's going great. Alrighty. Yes. Now you know I had trouble saying esophageal, <laughs> what is it to begin with? The esophageal is something that causes a spasm? Well, so let's, yeah, we'll go back so to the basics Take here. it back for me. Your esophagus is yes. a tube, a pipe, that connects your mouth to your stomach. What's the and purpose it, of it? it? It pushes the food down. So oh. it starts right about here and goes down to uh, right about here, your stomach. Yep. So when you swallow, it's like uh, how you, you know, you squeeze a tube of toothpaste. The muscles start squeezing at the top and push that food uh, sequentially down into the stomach. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what the esophagus Okay, is. so what's, how does it create a spasm? What causes that as well? So just like you have a spasm in any other muscle in your body, this is a muscle. Um, and it can spasm, and when it does, it causes symptoms. Um, so, uh, and, and it's not any particular cause per se, it just happens in, in some people. Yeah. So what you may experience with that is uh, dysphagia, which means trouble swallowing. You might have the sensation of food getting stuck in really? your throat. Really? Yeah. Choking. A not, choking sensation? Yeah, or? well, not so much choking because, you know, your windpipe starts up here. Right. So, you know, this is down below the level of your windpipe. Okay. You would feel uh, the, like food when you swallow does not go down well. Yes, I have to have a drink of water. Yeah, well, there are many causes for that. Spasms Dry one. chicken. Right, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dry chicken is one. Uh, another symptom that people have a lot is chest pain. Um and so okay. a lot of times people will have these chest pains and they'll go through this big workup. They'll go to their cardiologist. They'll go uh, to all different kinds of doctors and end up with us. And occasionally uh, we can find this esophageal spasm. Okay, so what's the sensation that one would know that they're having a spasm? Yeah, well, that's, like, that's, is that... that's the hard thing. So, you know, if you are having... Uh, Chest pains, that's not the first thing we look for. You're, no. going, you're going to go through other stuff. Heart and lungs. And right, right. So you would not call our office and say, I'm having, you know, chest, I'm having chest pain. Right. Uh, you would get referred to us by okay. a, a doctor for that. All right, that. so we've, we've, we've been diagnosed with esophageal spasms, correct? Yeah. By you. What is your procedure to fix that? And is it curable? Yeah. Is it classed as a disease? Yeah, well, yes, there are many different subtypes of esophageal spasm, um, but you, you, you treat it mostly with medications. There's not oh. any cure, there's not a, a surgery that you would do, so we would uh, put you on, on uh, medicines that would help stop that. Really? So there's not necessarily um, a disease as in because you've been eating badly or dietary concerns, no. there's nothing that you can fix it with maybe except some medications. That's right. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, some things that we'll try first, uh, I, I frequently tell my patients as we're going through this workup to try Altoids. Um, <laughs> Altoids. I love those Altoids. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of peppermint oil in them, which is oh. kind of a natural relaxer. Uh, so some people get uh, relief with using that. A lot of people don't. We have to put them on some more specialized. Is it an age thing? Uh, people of all ages have esophageal spasms. Um, I have young patients with it and old patients. Really? No, it's not hereditary? It's not that type of disease? No. It's okay, not, it just happens. It's not hereditary. Well, it yeah. sounds like a little bit like dietary issues along the lines with that, with eating the wrong foods that could cause that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the important thing here is if you're having, uh, the, the time you would want to call us, if you're having dysphagia, that's, yeah. if you're having trouble swallowing food, getting stuck in the throat, there's always a reason for us to look down your gotcha. throat and make sure everything. All right. As always, great information, buddy. We appreciate you. Thank you, Troy. If you want to find out more, there it all is up on the screen for you. We'll be back after this short break.